We fight for that itch. Rarely do I see any American Italians eating in here. But I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown. I amuse you. The real quality at your full Yes! 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 Hey there, welcome to Real Genius. I am Chris Bogner, culture critic of the Dallas Morning News, also known as Lord McDuff. I'm Robert Wolonsky, and I do something at the Dallas Morning News, and um... You're Macbeth. You're the man. You're tortured. You're just gonna go on a bloody rampage here. At any given moment, it's possible. You're absolutely moment. right. So I guess we're talking about Macbeth today. Indeed, something wicked. This the 493rd from. film version of Macbeth, by my count. I would say it's damn near the best, too. It's, really? Yeah. I watched a whole bunch of The Throne of, of Blood? Uh, Throne of Blood is the best. That's this, my favorite. I think this is the By best. Mile. This is the best one that is called Macbeth. Okay. So let's, let's, let's start there. I'll tell you why I like it, and then we'll watch uh, a scene from it near the very beginning. This is one of the most ruthlessly efficient Shakespeare <laughs> adaptations <laughs> that I've is. ever seen on film. It has like maybe 30% of the text, and yet it tells the story in very vivid style, um, it, and it moves and feels like a movie. And a lot of Shakespeare adaptations have trouble finding that balance. Yeah, it's like if uh, Macbeth meets The Matrix. I mean, in, in the fight scenes at least, that the fight, the first fight sequence, and we're gonna see a little bit of it in a second, um, is my favorite battle sequence I have seen on film in as long as I can remember. Especially that. considering that, that that battle isn't even really in Macbeth. Macbeth which, which, starts right after that Which, let's battle. be honest, makes it the best adaptation of a movie called Macbeth ever. Yes. The fact that it has that much grizzle and gore, uh, especially to start it out with. It is a, an extraordinarily wonderful sequence. So let's watch, um, this is Macbeth's first encounter with the weird sisters, the, the three witches, uh, with Banquo, I should say Michael Fassbender, is fantastic. As Macbeth, uh, he's with Patty Considine. He was also fantastic. He's also really good as Banquo. Let's take a look. What are these? Live you or are you that man may question? Speak if you can. What are you? That scene, I think, is emblematic of a lot of what's great about this film. These are the least weird, weird sisters that I have ever seen. They are very <laughs> human and very mortal, and I think most of the movie follows along on that tone. There's not a whole lot of mysticism going on here. This is no. kind of a nasty war movie um, about the ramifications of, of ambition and, and greed and violence. Yeah, and I, it's funny, I think Lady Macbeth, uh, Marion Cotillard, has also uh, reined in in a lot of ways as well, which I think really makes it effective and efficient in, in what you're talking about. Because it's that character, Lady Macbeth, is often played very sort of cartoonishly, like she's a Disney villain. Right. But here it's just sort of the whispers of, of conceit. She's, it's conspiratorial. I mean, she. The one other th another thing I love about this, both of those performers, they know they're acting for the camera. They're not... You know, you, you will see adaptations even of Macbeth. Um, I love the Polanski version, but there's a sense that they are talking to the back I see, row. That's why I can't stand the, the Polanski version. Um, in this, they are really plotting, and it's a very intimate, in fact, it's an erotically charged partnership. Much like this. Between, yes, very much. This is a, this is kind of a Macbeth, Lady Macbeth mm -hmm. thing going on right here. Totally out, erotically charged. Out damn spot. I'm out. sorry, I thought you said out. neurotically charged. Put your courage to the sticking point, Robert. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I, I was looking forward to this because of the cast. Yes. I love the cast, um, but I also just really, really admire how filmic this, this particular Shakespeare adaptation is. Well, I, I had not read your review until shortly before we, we shot this, and you said something in the review that I thought while watching the entirety of the film, which is that it feels like, I. You said Western. For me, it felt like a spaghetti Western. Mm -hmm. I mean, this feels like something that Sergio Leone would have done. 
and it, when it comes to the the, the wide screen, it, it, it's so epic and so intimate at the same time. It's so grisly, but it's so beautiful at the same time. I mean, it is the first Shakespearean adaptation I have seen in a very long time that I wanted to go back and watch again because it is so enveloping. It's so in, it's engaging. You know, what I rec- you know what I recommend if you haven't seen it? The um, Ray Fiennes version of Coriolanus that came out a few years ago. Right. Um, really, real, again, real tight, real visceral, really well-told movie story uh, with with Fiennes just acting. See, I like Sha- I like the Shakespearean films that, that bring it up to date. I think Hamlet uh, has recently been done. I I relate more to the Shakespeare that is contemporized. That's right. That's fine. Sounds um, good. What's that? <laughs> it should be a word if it's not. Contemporary and I. <laughs> yeah, no, like uh, I like it. Uh, I, I Look, I, when I was a kid, Shakespeare never did it for me. We read it aloud like everybody else reads it aloud, and I always got lost in it uh, in the worst possible sense. It never lost me in it. I just kind of tripped up over it. Its language has never appealed to me. Uh, I, I, I certainly have never found much poetry in it. Really? Just because I am a blunt instrument, my friend, <laughs> I am I am nothing but curse words. You heard it here first, Robert I'm, Wolanski, blunt instrument. I am curse words, grunts, and cigarette butts. Sounds like Shakespeare to me. Exactly. Well, no, and this is I have to say this is one of those adaptations that, man, it's so visceral. It just got under my skin in a way that so many don't because so many do speak and scream and shout to the back row. This one. Five minutes in, I, I just couldn't turn away. I mean, it really, there's a tingle that comes you, when you watch a movie that takes you by surprise. You saw a dagger before your eyes, and you followed it to its yes. logical conclusion. I just thought it was glorious in its, in its presentation. I mean, it is, it's a hell of a movie. It is. And again, not to you know, beat the same drum uh, over and over, but it is very much a movie. Yeah. And, and you, it becomes very evident right off the bat. That first battle sequence is one of the most extraordinary scenes I have seen in film this year. And it was thrilling. And I went back and luckily we have a screeners of it. So I went back and watched it five or six times. Yes, that's why Robert wanted to do, the, do this this week because we have screeners. I'm a lazy, mix, mix blunt that. instrument. <laughs> lazy, blunt instrument. So, just so you know. But it's a play. I, I, I seldom recommend Shakespearean adaptations of anything to anyone for any reason. This is a, this is a top film of the year. Yeah, it's a really good it's film. It's a hell of a movie. Look, you're a fancy, fancy man in Golden State Warrior t-shirts. That jacket is borrowed. I know that you like to go see Shakespeare. It's not just borrowed. It's like thrown on from the closet right. in the studio. You're, you're damn near a hobo, there. but you just pretend to be cultural and elite, and I get that, and I respect that, and I think it's fantastic, and I'm very happy for you. Thou forsook me. Huh? What? Yeah. That's such bullshit. <laughs> so I, I mean, if you were talking about how you never really got into Shakespeare as... As a child, except when it's used in Star Trek episodes. Except when it's used in Star Trek. There's two actually two Star Trek episodes are. that are direct quotes from Macbeth, uh, Dagger, Dagger of the Mind, and All Our Yesterdays. Oh yes, both both from Macbeth. Yes, um, I had a great Shakespeare class with with uh, Stephen Greenblatt. Oh my God! I'm dropping names. Oh my now. God! Where's and this was, conversation and that was, gone? And that was what really sort of made me see what's in this work. I'm a DISD Probably. student, my friend. <laughs> I was lucky just to get through fog hat lyrics. Public schools. I, I, <laughs> right. I've only gone to public schools. That's right. Um, but anyway, I mean, go see this even if you're not a big Shakespeare like me. person like Robert. Because I'm not smart. Philistines are, are I am a, also I am encouraged to go see Macbeth. I'm damn near a knuckle dragger. Speaking of which, next week, <laughs> oh. Star Wars. Nothing but Star Nothing Wars. But Very excited. Star Next week, we Wars. actually get to see Star Wars. We do. At an undisclosed location. location at an undisclosed time. Top secret bunker. But um, we'll have it in time to do Real Genius for next week. We will. Early. And we'll get all Star Wars-y up in it. I'm just going to tell you now, if you've watched this far, and I'm not sure that you have. I don't um, know about We it. might just be literally be talking to ourselves at this point. But if you uh, are going this long, um, next week's is going to be two hours. That's the name of my memoir actually talking to myself at this point. <laughs> That's right. All right, there you go, Macbeth this week. Great, fantastic, but it's no Star Wars. That's next week. See you then.